At the moment, uh, the human rights uh, to water and sanitation were recognized 10 years ago. Um, I was the first UN Special Rapporteur on the human rights to water and sanitation. And when I was appointed in 2008, uh, I saw my, my mandate precisely as being to investigate, to study the obligations that were already out there and eventually propose to UN member states the recognition of the rights. So I felt that my mandate was to pave the ground for the recognition of the rights and to recommend to governments that these rights should be uh, recognized. Uh, in the summer, spring summer of 2010, the government of Bolivia uh, decided to put forward a resolution on uh, recognizing the human right to water and that's when I started to be even more involved in direct contact with Bolivia, uh, with a permanent rep uh, representative of Bolivia to the UN in New York in order to make sure that not only water but also sanitation were recognized as rights. Uh, yes, I can. <laughs> when, uh, when I got the information that a resolution was under preparation and when I got hold of the resolution, don't ask me why, I don't even know, remember anymore how I saw the text, but I saw the text. I realized the text only refers to water, to recognizing water as a human right. When in my work as rapporteur, uh, I had uh, the firm conviction, and the numbers still prove it, that sanitation was much more off track than water. That sanitation was the ugly duckling of the pair. That people were happy to talk about water, recognize water as, uh, as a human right, water is nice, uh, and sanitation was left behind. Um, it was less prioritized. It was even a taboo issue. There was stigma around sanitation. So my big mission back then in my mind was, and what drove me, was to go to New York and convince Bolivia that not only, not only water, but also sanitation had to be recognized. And I went to the permanent mission of Bolivia, met with the ambassador then, and brought him my first report to the UN, which was precisely on human rights obligations regarding sanitation. And I asked him, Mr. Ambassador, please include uh, sanitation. And he promised me to do so. And I would call, he gave me his mobile phone number. I would call him every two weeks and he would always answer me, don't worry, sanitation will stay. And sanitation stayed. And when he presented the, the resolution to the uh, UN General Assembly, he even quoted from my sanitation uh, report. there was an impact of the recognition of these rights on different fronts. Number one, um, in the prep process for, um, for the development of the Sustainable Development Goals, uh, it was obvious that the, um, the normative content of the rights and the fact that the rights were rights, recognizable rights, was at the forefront of negotiations. And uh, it was clear for everyone that when designing um, SDG 6 as well as the targets under the Sustainable Development Goal 6, the, um, the normative content of the rights had to be there. For example, quality, affordability, accessibility, etc. So, and, and, and I also think that the fact that the rights was, were recognized also created a political momentum that led um, to us having an, uh, a self-standing goal on water and sanitation, which is something that we did not have under the Millennium Development Goal. So I think that one of the reasons why we have SDG 6 is precisely because the rights had been recognized and the visibility of the sector uh, was increased. This is number one. Number two, the fact that sanitation was also recognized as a right gave more visibility to sanitation, uh, which was, as I said before, um, which had not been prioritized, which was not discussed. Um, I remember when I presented my first report to the UN, it was on sanitation, and I remember feeling uncomfortable, also feeling the taboo around sanitation, not daring to say the word shit in front of diplomats. So I think that the recognition of the right also had an important impact 
on sanitation in general, in making sure that we talk more about sanitation, that sanitation is prioritized. And you can see, for example, in India with Swatch Bharat, the way in which we speak about open defecation and ending open defecation, even the discussions around menstrual hygiene, I think that these all gain momentum through the recognition of the rights. Finally, the recognition of the right had a positive impact in, at the national level, for example, um, on, uh, in making sure that countries recognize these rights also in national law, national constitutions. We have, for example, Slovenia, Kenya, Burkina Faso, other countries that have incorporated the human right into national legislation, made the right... Um, justiciable uh, before national courts. So there has been this positive movement at the national level in terms of constitutions, ordinary laws, but also national policies, national strategies that incorporate uh, uh, the right. Well, some of the barriers uh, for realizing the rights um, have been, um, for example, um, the concept of inequalities. The fact that the rights require us to have a mind shift, to work um, differently, not to do business as usual, to do business unusual, meaning um, the, uh, the prioritization of, um, of the most off track, of the people who have been left behind, those who are hardest to reach. Uh, before, our idea was well, we provide uh, water and sanitation to those who are easiest to, uh, to provide uh, services to, and then there will, there will be a trickle-down effect. There is no trickle-down effect, and I think that the absence of a trickle-down effect has been a, a, a barrier. Um, so I think that the invisibility of certain groups, the lack of a mind shift at the national level um, is one of the barriers that we, uh, that we are uh, facing. Um, I think that also the lack of political prioritization of the rights to water and sanitation at the national level <clears throat> Is still, is still a problem. We need more visibility. We need to conquer the hearts of the politicians. We need civil society to be more active and demand, uh, and demand these rights in a stronger uh, uh, manner. We need to have better accountability mechanisms at the national level for water and sanitation. And this is one of the reasons why sanitation and water for all, the partnership exists, to make sure that we mobilize this efforts at the national and at the global levels in order to make these rights a reality. In terms of the incentives, I would start by saying this is the right thing to do, making sure that everyone has access uh, to these human rights, to water and sanitation. First, it's the right thing to do. Second, let me bring the legal argument, it's a, it's a legal obligation. Number three, it has knock-on effects on other human rights. Um, it empowers women, it empowers girls who, uh, who don't have to spend the day carrying water, can have a job or can go to school. Also, the uh, realizing the rights to water and sanitation has a positive impact on economic growth, on uh, the development of the country, and it makes sure that every country that fully uh, implements the rights uh, gets more, has more, uh, avoids investments and has a better return on investments and avoids certain costs, for example, in the area of health. Well, I see the next 10 years as um, a period where we can and we should make significant progress in realizing the rights. And why? We have the legal framework of, uh, of the rights and we have uh, the Sustainable Development Goals, um, which force us to do better, that are more demanding on all of us um, and that force us to realize the rights and go in the right direction. I would say that the last 10 years 
were the years where we were getting adjusted to the legal framework, adjusted and uh, where we were learning about what the framework meant. Now there are zero excuses, no excuses for, every, for anyone. Uh, we need to uh, take the steps now in making sure uh, that we put all of these requirements in place. From the side of SWA, of Sanitation and Water for All, we uh, have a framework uh, of guiding principles that include human rights, uh, the human rights to water and sanitation. We have uh, 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 our building blocks that guide countries and their uh, development partners in making sure that there are some pieces in place, some foundational pieces as laws and budgets and, um, and regulatory frameworks and institutional frameworks that um, are conducive to realizing the rights. Uh, so we, what I mean to say is that we need now really to implement and what I mean to say is that through SWA we want to support our, all our current partners, future uh, country partners in making sure that the promise, the rights entail is delivered for all, always and everyone in the next 10 years.